ओमज्ञानतिमिरंधस्याज्ञानंजनस्थलाखया चक्षुरुन्मिलितं येन तस्मै श्रीगुरुवे नमः नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशकारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे सो हेयर कश्यप मुनि इज डिस्क्राइबिंग सम ऑफ द वेरी प्लीजिंग एंड ग्रेट क्वालिटीज ऑफ प्रहलाद महाराज यदा इदम विश्व प्रसीदति यदात्मक यदात मीन्स बाय द मर्सी ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड बाय द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड यदात्मक द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज ओमनिपोटेंट एंड because the lord is omnipotent and because the lord is very merciful idam vishwam prasidati everyone will be pleased by prahlad how does the lord arrange this why why everyone is not pleased with anybody let us say we are there so many people are there but we find so many people are our enemies so many people dislike us but whereas by the arrangement of the lord by his mercy yat prasadat yad atmakam and by the omnipotence of the lord idam vishwam prasidati the whole vishwa the whole world every living entity will be pleased with prahlad why that is explained saswadrag bhagwan yasya the supreme lord swadrak means he himself personally takes care of his devotees he is very dear he likes his devotees he personally takes care of his devotees saswatrak bhagwan yasya and why does he like his devotees toshyate ananya drasha the devotee of the lord the pure devotee of the lord without deviation ananyaya means without any other consideration without deviation without looking at someone else see without deviation means just like in today's conversation we were reading what is real goswami one who preaches that one should surrender everything to the supreme personality of god that famous verse prabhupad quotes sarva dharman paritajya maam ekam sharanam raja one who preaches that everyone should surrender to the supreme personality of godhead he is real goswami so without deviation toshyate one who is satisfied only in worshiping krishna one without second doesn't look at anyone else so this looks little mysterious 
isn't it krishna is saying one who is satisfied only in me i take care personally of him swadrak and then by my mercy and by my omnipotence this devotee becomes pleasing to all pleasing to all and only to me looks little little contradictory he is only worshiping me but he is pleasing to all isn't it? sometimes we think narrow mindedness one why krishna is saying only me only me and sometimes devotees are also thought like that that they are very narrow minded they don't consider bother about other devatas demigods no it is by their undeviated faith undeviated surrender to the supreme lord one who is without second with this quality they are able to be pleasing to everyone else this is very important somebody is devoted to some devata somebody is devoted to family somebody is working for the welfare of this they are actually narrow minded because they cannot think of others somebody who is thinking about his country cannot think about other country somebody who is thinking about human being cannot think about other living entities but somebody undeviatedly he is thinking about the supreme lord he is so broad by the arrangement of the lord that he can work for the welfare of everyone he is pleasing to everyone that's what prabhupad is saying by the arrangement of the lord how does this happen that prabhupad is explaining in the purport so prabhupad says the supreme lord he is situated in the heart of every living entities sarvasya cha aham hridi sannivishto krishna says that in bhagavad gita i am situated in every one's heart so prabhu pad is saying the lord is situated in every one's heart he can dictate to the living entities as he likes he can dictate even though one may be very envious by nature the lord can dictate do not be envious of my devotee yes. prabhupad gives an example just like snake is very envious snake is considered to be very envious without fault it will bite that is called enviousness you are walking you are not stepping on the on the snake or anything but if the snake sees you he will immediately bite you So Prabhupada says snake is one example of envious living entity. So it is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita and more elaborately in Chaitanya Bhagavata Prabhupada quotes this gives this example that Haridas Thakur he was a great devotee of the Lord and he would chant every day 300000 names of the Lord. and to avoid the disturbances of the people he would go and chant in one cave in the forest he would go and chant in the cave he would be chanting his 300000 names of the lord but many devotees would come and meet haridas thakur so they would come to the cave but they will be very afraid and the moment they go in they would not be able to stay for a long time because of poisonous effect of a snake which was living in that cave even the breathing of that snake was so poisonous that anybody who would enter into that cave would not be able to stay there for long time they would immediately return from there so then they all decided let us go and plead to haridas thakur that uh, he should better move out of this cave it is very dangerous and uh, you know for haridas thakur also it is dangerous 
not only for him we are not able to go and meet him so they all went and they all said and pleaded to haridas thakur that it is very dangerous we have come to know that there is a snake living here so through some ayurvedic doctors you know when he also came with us and he sensed he was able to make out that this is all poison being emanated by that poisonous snake so that's why nobody is able to stay there for long time but we are so haridas thakur said i have been living here for many days i have not sensed any such poison but anyway i don't want to put you into trouble before uh, morning rises i will leave this cave don't worry i will not give you any more trouble so saying like this haridas thakur prepared to leave the cave in the evening but before the sun set in front of all the devotees the snake walked out of the cave and he never returned there once again so prabhupada explains the lord dictated in the heart of that snake that better you leave from here not my devotee <laughs> and even before also we can understand that haridas thakur was living there for so many days and that snake was not giving any trouble to haridas thakur and haridas thakur was not envious of that snake but the lord's arrangement the lord dictated in the heart of that snake that for better you leave this cave and leave my devotee alone so that other devotees who are visiting haridas thakur they will not be troubled by you so this is an example prabhupada is saying the lord can dictate as he likes from the heart of any living entity that do not be envious of my devotee the supreme lord is situated everywhere as the super soul he can dictate to anyone and everyone as he likes the would be grandson of diti who was predicted to be a great devotee would be liked by everyone even by the enemies of his father why this is very important <clears throat> prabhupad is giving the reason why prahlad maharaj would be liked by everyone even by the enemies of his father even they would like prahlad maharaj even by the enemies of his father because this point should be noted he would have no other vision besides the supreme personality of god had the pure devotee of the lord he only sees the supreme lord everywhere in everyone's heart even in the serpent heart in the heart of that envious living entity even in the heart of any enemy or any envious living entity the pure devotee like prahlad he can only see the supreme lord residing he doesn't see anything else of course he also sees that this poor living entity by his karma he has become envious to me but otherwise this living entity is also as pure as i may be today he is also entitled to become purified but somehow by his karma by his nature he has become envious his real nature is not to be envious his real nature is godly but now he has become envious so he is still very sympathetic to him and what does he see he sees parmatma residing in his heart you see he is able to see parmatma residing everywhere so a pure devotee of the lord sees the presence of his worshipable lord everywhere so when a devotee sees like this the lord also reciprocates you see suppose a devotee is able to see parmatma in the heart of even a serpent then how can the serpent bite the lord will also reciprocate that my devotee is seeing me even in the heart of a serpent so the lord reciprocates equally dictating to the snake that even in your body my devotee is able to see me so i dictate to you 
do not harm this devotee you see so the lord also equally reciprocates the lord reciprocates in such a way that all living entities in whom the lord is dwelling as the super soul also likes a pure devotee because the lord is present in their heart and can dictate to them to be friendly to his devotee there are many instances in history where even the most ferocious animal became friendly to a pure devotee of the lord you see this how prabhupada is beautifully explaining this is very important prabhupada is saying this is all possible by the arrangement of the lord you see even in the verse it says yat prasadat it is by the mercy of the supreme lord yat prasadat by his mercy by the supreme lord's mercy yat atmakam by the omnipotency of the lord because the supreme lord is prabhupa says because the personality of god had the supreme controller of the universe he is a supreme controller he can control he can dictate to anyone as he likes so by the dictates by the supreme arrangement of the supreme lord by yat prasadat by his mercy and what will happen idam vishvam prasidati the whole world will be pleased with great devotee like prahlad maharaj why why the whole world will be pleased swadrag bhagwan the lord is very very dear to his devotees the devotees are very dear to the lord he takes personal care of them toshyate ananyaya ananyaya drisha and because the pure devotees do not see anything else except the supreme personality of god head without deviation they are completely surrendered only to the supreme personality of god head in their vision they have nothing else but the supreme personality of god head you see so we can see this that how the pure devotee of the lords they are very very pleasing even to envious the similar thing is said about uh, the six goswamis the shad goswamis prabhupada explains very wonderfully the lord is so dear the devotees are so dear to the lord that sometimes the lord gives more credit to his devotees then he wants to take himself rather than taking the credit the lord wants to give the credit to his devotee we see this even in mahabharat the lord shows to arjuna you fight or you don't fight i have already decided this people will be killed so everything is already decided by the lord but still the lord wants to give that credit to arjuna that arjuna killed all these people so krishna doesn't want to take that credit krishna is saying i have finished them don't worry but i want to give this credit to you arjuna you fight on my behalf and you become a great devotee famous as a great archer famous as a great devotee of the lord prabhupada explains about the shad goswami is also the six goswami the lord wanted to give credit to the six goswami is more Prabhupada says when Lord Krishna was personally present in Vrindavan he was very pleasing to everyone but not to the demons and that's why demoniac people always wanted somehow or other to get rid of Krishna so Lord Krishna was very pleasing he is called Krishna he is very pleasing to everyone but still he was not very pleasing to Kamsa not very pleasing to Shishupala he was not very pleasing to all these bakasur dhenukasur all these asuras so many asuras came he was not very pleasing to them but in vrindavan in the same vrindavan when the six goswamis came they were pleasing to one and all so prabhupada says by the arrangement of the lord the lord wants to give more credit to his devotees that when the lord was personally present even though he was very pleasing to everyone but still there were many people who were you know not very pleased by the presence of krishna but when the six goswamis were present in vrindavan everyone was pleased 
And Srinivas Acharya in his song, he has exemplified this very nicely. Today also in conversation, we were reading about who were six Goswamis. Nana, Shastra, Vichara, Neka, Nipunav. Those who want to establish by thorough studying, thoroughly they studied all the Vedic literatures in order to establish Sad Dharma Samsthapakau, the real Dharma. And what is that real Dharma? Sarva Dharma and Paritajya Mahamekam Shraham Praja. In order to establish that Dharma, they studied all the Vedic literatures and established this Dharma. So, Prabhupada explains uh, this in uh, this song of Srinivas Acharya. Krishnat Kirtan Gana Nartan Parau Premam Ratambo Nidhi Dhira Dhira Jana Priya Priya Karau Nirmat Sarau Pujitau. So, very nicely Prabhupada translates and explains this. Krishna Utkirtana. They were always engaged in chanting. Utkirtanam, Utkirtanam. Not this professional kirtan. See, there is a difference between. That's how sometimes we find even many people, Jagjit Singh and all so many film people. Of course, when they sing the holy name of the Lord, some benefit goes to them. But devotees are not amused or attracted to such kind of kirtan very much. Professional kirtan, isn't it? Whereas, when the pure devotee of the Lord, just like Prabhupada kirtan, anywhere, any temple you go, just you hear that vibration of Hare Krishna kirtan of Prabhupada, the whole atmosphere looks so transcendental. Isn't it? Just enter into any temple, wherever Prabhupada kirtan is going on. It is so transcendental, so soothing. Anyone, even outside people, if you ask them, they like it so much, immediately they will go to the shop and they will ask, is this Kirtan available? Correct? Many times we would have heard. So, pure devotees Kirtan, transcendental Kirtan is different from this professional Kirtan. So, Prabhupada explains that Udgataha Tamaha, this is called Utkirtan. So, what is explained is Krishnot Kirtan. Utkirtan means that Kirtan which is not professional. That Kirtan which is transcendental. That Kirtan which is Udgata Tamaha. Not on material platform. That Kirtan. That is the Kirtan they were doing. And how they were doing? Loudly. Transcendental Kirtan. Transcendental vibration. Krishnot Kirtan Gana Nartana Parau. And how they were doing? They were engaged in singing, dancing and chanting. Krishnot Kirtan Gana Nartana Parau. And what was the consciousness they were having when they were doing this Kirtan? They were planning to please all the people, how they are liking my song. No. Their mind was completely absorbed in Krishna. You see? Krishnot Kirtan Gan Nartan Parau Prema Amritam Bonidhi Their mind was merged in the nectar of the Supreme Lord. They were, they were always relishing that nectar in their consciousness. <clears throat> merged into the ocean of love of Godhead. Prema Amritam Bonidhi And because of this, just like here also it is said, Ananyaya Drisha. Because constantly they are merged in the Supreme Lord. They don't think of anything else. Similarly, these six Goswamis, their mind was merged in the ocean of bliss of Krishna consciousness, Krishna Prema. See? Prema Amritambo Nidhi. So, Prabhupada is explaining, by this, because of this, Dhira, Adhira, Jana, Priya, Priya, Karau. Because they were also merged completely in Krishna consciousness, Dhira and Adhira, both of them, ruffians, Prabhupada explains, Adhira means rascals, Dhira means devotees. 
So whether they were ruffians or rascals, those who were uncontrolled in their senses, they are called Adhira. Even such people liked, you know, they were, the six Goswamis were dear even to such people, even to ordinary people, the six Goswamis were dear. And so Prabhupada is explaining, this is the process. By Krishna Kirtan, one can become dear, very dear, both for Dhira and Adhira. Dhira means sober, Adhira means rascals. So Krishna Kirtan is so nice, you can become favorite both for gentle and rascal. You see, it is so nice. And that is actually happening. So Dhira, Adhira, Jana, Priya, Priya, Karau, Nirmatsarau. Because those who are chanting Krishna Kirtan, they are Nirmatsarau. They are not envious. So what kind of Kirtan? Non-envious Kirtan. Merged in Krishna Kirtan. That kind of Kirtan. Not Kirtan where we are envious. See? They are not envious. Krishna consciousness movement. Prabhupada is saying, what is the meaning of enviousness? Prabhupada is saying, this caste Goswamis, they are envious. The so-called followers of Hindu dharma, they are all envious. No, we will not allow these foreigners to enter into Jagannath temple. Envious, this is only for us. These people are envious. This third Goswami, the six Goswamis, they were not envious. So Prabhupada is saying, what is the meaning of non-envious? Prabhupada is saying, this Krishna consciousness movement is non-envious movement. Why? We are not restricting it only to India. We are not saying it is only for caste Goswamis. This is only for Indians. Prabhupada is saying, no. <clears throat> they are not envious. Krishna consciousness movement is not limited therefore in India. It is for the whole world. We are not envious. We only see Indians will learn it. No. We have no such program. Tri bhuvane manyau. You see? Then further Prabhupada is saying, Tri, bhu, tri bhuvane manyau. It should be honored all over the world. This is Krishna Kirtan. You see? So, this can happen by the arrangement of the Lord, by the mercy of the Lord. Many more things are there. But I think time is over. We can, some other time we can discuss more. Grantra Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai Shila Prabhupada ki jai.